Hey what's up guys so today we are going to be talking about the new node in mash and that is the offset node and offset is one of the most useful node inside of mash but because it helps you to move around your entire mesh uh, uh, mash network uh, into any area that you want you can orient your uh, mash scene you can scale them and you can pretty much translate and do a lot of different thing with your fall offs so it's a pretty interesting node so let's quickly get into it so i'm going to start off by taking a simple cube and we can go to our mash menu and let's click on mash all right once you have it let's go to our distribute node and we'll click on grid to start off with we'll have a nice grid going on and i'm going to increase the number to maybe like four four and four and let's make it four as well all right let me, let's go for three maybe yeah so we have a nice looking cube um and i'm going to turn off the grid all right so if you go to our mash we have this uh, offset node and what offset allows as i said it allows you to move your mash around uh, the space so what i can do is i can add an offset node and here you'll notice that the mode has been set to offset you can also choose this to be a multiplier consider it as a overlay mode which allows you to uh, pretty much blend within your distribute and your offset and you can do multiple modes you can override or you can close point or multiply multiply by time and so on and then you can obviously choose the transformation space to be world or local if you have changed your space to uh, local when you were moving around your mesh then you can probably choose from here now the one thing that you'll notice is you have this position rotation and scale you can move them around if you want and uh, sorry and uh, and you can move them something like this i'm gonna bring back the grid just so you'll get the idea what we are doing and let's say I want to move my mesh on the upper side so I can do that I can place it uh, nice and perfectly on top of the grid and I want to rotate this the entire cube so I can do this which is pretty interesting uh, sorry my bad and uh, I can do the same here I can do this and there you have it so this is what you'll have and again you can do the scaling and everything if you want and you can just make them smaller and pretty much change the entire thing now let's say if you don't want a certain thing let's say you want to only use rotation with your uh, offset node what you can do is you can turn off the scale and position and you can keep the rotation only if you just want the scale you can turn both of them off and you can only play around with the scale value so you'll have only access to your scale you can also choose the id if you want but uh, make sure you have the id node uh, turned on and also you have to have multiple objects uh, more than one primitive to have the access to the id uh, which we have already discussed in the id node video and uh, again same goes for all of them if you want to choose only one thing you can turn it on and off all right so there are a lot of different ways that you can also manipulate how these cubes work so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a uniform value for all of them i'm going to reduce the scale by 0.5 let's maybe make it 0 0.5 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so we have a very small looking cube and i'm just going to change the rotation to maybe something like 15 or uh, 45 something like this so we have something that looks like this or maybe let's go for 90 all right there we go so we have something that looks like this so if i turn off the rotation you'll notice that we get something like this so if I go to my clamp, uh, you'll notice that we have the option to low and high clamp as well, where we can pretty much uh, interchange how this cube will behave and so on. You can also animate this pretty nicely and it's pretty interesting. Uh, then again, you can multiply this by time. But if you want to use this, you have to change the mode to multiply. And then uh, the same goes for all the other modes. If you go for closest point, you can change that as well here. But the interesting part is in the fall off, uh, which is quite interesting. I'm just uh, gonna turn this off. And uh, so we here we have the fall off. B before discussing fall off, uh, I'm just gonna quickly show you the strength. So we have the strength and strength basically decide how much strength uh, the offset node uh, is going to impact on your distribute node. So if we lower this down, you'll notice that you can find a blending uh so you can say between in between of both nodes and you can keep it to something like that consider it uh, like uh, how much strength you want how much effect it should have on your object so you can have a minimal effect on your mash 
and then again you can obviously randomize it by decreasing the random strength and you'll have if you're creating something abstract and you want a non-uniform look so you can go for a random strength so this looks quite good and again you have the step value to creating a step action and there you go um, so I'm just gonna quickly go to the follow so here we have a follow -off, and what follow -off is basically it's a hollow area which uh, decides how much uh, impact of this offset node is going to be affected so everything inside those area inside the fall of area will be affected by the offset node everything that's outside will not be affected at all so um, what i'm going to do is right click here and i'm going to create a fall off so you'll notice that we get this invisible looking sphere uh, just some grid so i'm going to select my fall off and i'm going to click r and i'm just going to scale this down a bit to something like this all right so you'll notice that we get uh, two follows. Uh, technically, it's one, but we get two circles here, two spheres. And the first one is the inner zone, and the second one is the outer zone. You can obviously go back and change the inner and outer zone, which basically is the more the more object that is inside of your inner zone will be affected the most. Uh, the farther it goes to the outer zone, the least effect it's going to have on it, on them. So consider it like a follow -off, that you have a gradual way of uh, creating this impact which is like here and then you have a point and it slowly fades away as it goes farther to farther now let's say if you're not uh, if you don't want to like have this effect or you just want a linear feel on this what you can also do is uh, select your fall off and you can just simply turn it off by increasing the number to the actual fall off size i like to keep some fall off in the scene so i'm going to keep it a value of 0.8 uh, now, right now, if I select my fall off and hit W, and if I move them around, you'll notice that follow fall off uh, is kind of animating, or you can say affecting our uh, scene, which is quite interesting. Now, if you want the inverted effect, what you want is uh, the cube should be active when it's outside of those uh, spheres. What you can do is you can simply invert the fall off, and now you have this kind of effect. So you can do the invert animation with this. Uh, again, you can change a lot of different shapes of this. You can set it to cubes. You can set it to nerve curve if you have. If you are using in particles or something like that, you can keep it. Or if you want to use a simple mesh, you can use that as well. So I'm going to keep it to sphere. Now remember, the fall off is completely linear here, as you can see. But you can change how this uh, entire graph behave by changing the interpolations and so on. So we can cre create this weird looking. Uh, graph on our own so I'm just gonna transform something all right so we have something like this so whenever I move my uh, cube you'll notice since we have a very steep height and then decrease and then again some height the cubes are behaving according to that so you can create this uh, spectrum or jagged looking animation as well if you want and if you just want a smoother animation you can just simply take this and uh, slow it down a bit so you'll have this all right and i'm just gonna get rid of this one and this one so we have something like this all right uh anyway so again you can change the interpolation how it looks and so on then you have some additional settings and uh, some connection which we are going to be discussing in future videos and you can change the display color if you want you can uh, set it to green if it helps you to visualize your fall off now if you go to mash again you'll notice that you have this fall off here and you can obviously turn it off and uh, turn it on and if you want to take another fall off, let's see if you are only limited by this i'm just going to quickly uh, change the ramp entirely to set it to linear again so we have this looking and i'm just gonna scale this down really low and i'm gonna put it right over here so there we have it all right and i'm gonna go back to my mesh and i'm gonna turn on my rotation all right and let's maybe just scale it a bit all right and again we can lower this down if you want a very gradual transition between both of them and I can go back to my mesh and I can right click and I can create another fall off. You, remember you also have the option to connect fall off. So let's say you have two different nodes and you want to have only one fall off. So I'm just going to quickly get rid of this again. Uh, it's better to demonstrate that. So again, we are back to fall off one. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another offset here. And in this offset, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change the position to a bit higher to maybe like two. All right. And I'm going to create a fall off. Okay. So we have this fall off and I'm going to select this fall off and just take it backwards to something like this. And again, let's scale this way, way down. And I'm going to set the color to maybe like blue. Okay. And maybe something like all right 350 all right and if i move this you'll notice that the cube starts to uh, go higher and if i go to my mash and if i select my offset number one which we have original follows i can bring this follow up as well i'm gonna middle mouse click and drop it here so now we have two follow off attached to our original offset obviously you're not going to be using this uh, for the follow -off offset if you're using multiple nodes, let's say if you're using a color node and uh, you give something like maybe a green and you start to randomize different colors and so on, whatnot. And if you go to a fall off and let's say you create this fall off and uh, I'm going to select this color one and I'm just going to scale this to maybe like four, four and four. And I can go to my offset again. Uh, the first offset and I can attach this color offset over here. So whenever I animate this and I can select my original offset and whatever I do, I can pretty much change my original uh, offset as well where I have the color option. So I can pretty much move them around and do a lot of different transition with it. So you can use multiple fall off to just get one animation into it. So it doesn't have to be like a separate node or a multiple offset only. So let's quickly get into some animation and we'll try to figure out how we can create this multiple fall off and create a center uh, animation for it. So I'm going to just delete this. All right. So we have this one. I'm just going to call this a rotation. Uh, and we can also use a scale. All right. And the other one is, I believe, position. All right. It's better to name your scene. So what I'm going to do is go back here and we have this and what I'm going to do is go to my scale here and I'm going to set key, right click, set key. And as it goes towards the 40 frame, it's just going to go right around here to maybe like center. All right. You can snap your fall off by hitting X and I'm going to right click set key. So we have this animation. Okay. It looks good. I'm going to do the same with this. So first frame is completely in the position. And as it goes towards the 40th frame, it's going to go towards here to maybe like this and maybe a bit higher. Oh, let's keep it low and right click set key. All right, there we go. So I'm going to go back to my first frame and let's play this. So there we have it. And what we can do is we can reverse the same thing. If you want to create a looping animation, what we can do is we can just uh, the keyframe that we have here, we can right click copy this and we can go to the 80th frame. And what we can do is paste this. All right. I'm going to do the same with this, select this, right click, copy, go to 80th frame and let's paste. And I'm just going to shorten this whole thing to 80 keyframes only. And let's play this. And there you go. So we have something that looks like this. Uh, so this looks pretty good. Uh, this looks pretty neat. And this is how you can use fall off to create uh, amazing looking animation. And what you can also do is again, since we have this scalar value on our mash, I can go back to my mash and let's go to offset. And maybe we can go for a even lower number or let's keep it to 0.5 and 0.5 on X and Z. And let's lower the height of this to maybe like 0.8. So that way we'll have something that looks like this in the middle. And there you have it. Uh, so yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Again, you can always go back and let's say if you have less interaction with this, you can increase the zoom of it or you can select this. You can pretty much scale this up and now you have a higher fall off. So there you go. Uh, so I hope this was helpful. This is a pretty interesting note, a very helpful note. So whenever you're working with any type of mash scene, offset is a must note that we always take to create a very interesting looking scene. So I hope this was helpful. Use it in your scene. If you have any question or doubt, feel free to ask me and I'll see you in the next video.